How's it going there guys? It is Earthmaster here. Good Monday night and it's September 4th, 2017, 9.34 p.m. here on the west coast of California. And as have you, as you've heard, I'm sure, uh, there's been quite an earthquake swarm in the southern Idaho region uh, following that 5.3 earthquake they had a couple days ago. Quite, uh, quite a numerous magnitude of earthquakes there. Nothing above the main shaker, which was a 5.3. Uh, in fact, I think the largest they've had as far as the uh, aftershock activity goes is about a 4.5. But uh, lo a lot to cover in this video. And um, yeah, I'm going to try not to say um too much, but it's just, it's kind of my bad habit, which I have, which I'm trying to get rid of. So I'll be honest with you. It's going to take probably many many practices to get rid of the ums and uhs but anyway getting back to the earthquake activity in uh, southern idaho region i'll take you over here and show you a couple maps in regards to the activity that's occurring over there and as you can see it's southeastern idaho region with the uh, red dot indicating the most recent earthquake and that is a 3.0 11 kilometers east-southeast of Soda Springs, Idaho. They're all within the general same area these earthquakes are. And uh, it's not really spread out in any certain fashion, just uh, pretty much clumped up together in, in an area uh, where there's just been a lot of buildup of pressure and probably a weak spot in the crust. Um, if you take a look at the area here, you, you realize the color you got the Rocky Mountains right that go through Colorado uh, portions of Utah up through Wyoming Idaho Montana and extend up through Canada that's all part of the deformation of the land caused by pressure from the west um, and you got the old American craton which is a an old area of landmass over here just to the east over here that is pretty much stable it doesn't move so you have all this pressure being applied from the west creating these mountains over time these super high mountains I mean there it's obvious that there's pressure building up due to the uh, the geological features of the land obviously um, I do not believe this has anything to do with magma movement or uh, any kind of impending eruption or super volcanic eruption Yellowstone is up here in the western northwestern corner of Wyoming well over well 100 about 150 miles till you get to the end of, to the edge of the park over here definitely not related to you know the super volcano up here in Yellowstone National Park um, I'm trying not to say um it's just a habit so here is the North American craton that I was telling you about it says a continental crust that has remained relatively stable for the past 600 million years. That's why if you ever go to um, Oklahoma, anything east of Wyoming, uh, eastern Wyoming, eastern Montana, relatively flat land out there. You don't have a lot of buildup of mountains and crust that's being pushed up and deformed by all this pressure over here on the North American plate uh, from the Pacific plate. You know, you look at Nevada and all these areas over here all have mountains and there's pressure that is creating those mountains. Now the earthquake activity in southern Idaho recently is just pretty much a weak spot in the crust where it has it has basically has nowhere to go. Um, so it's creating these cracks and earthquakes and pops and there's always a chance when you have an increased activity like that of seeing a larger earthquake. I'm going to show you this other article here in a minute. But it's also got to do with this feature right here. Um, the Pacific Northwest Slow Slip event, Events. Uh, this is where the portions over here, the Cascadia Subduction Zone, uh, these instruments are picking up slow slip event movements. Tremors, so to speak. Different than earthquakes. Um, they just make a different type of signature that you have to have special equipment to pick up on and it's relatively quiet there's not a whole lot of slippage is that a word slippage um, within the area this here shows just a tad bit of earthquake activity in the northern section of California Northwest California and not a whole lot of activity 
So there's no movement underneath this plate. Uh, basically still just pressure uh, being applied from the west over here. And it's going to create earthquakes in weak sections of the, uh, the plate east of here. And that's what we're seeing right now in southern Idaho. Where there's been, let's zoom in here a little bit and I'll show you guys a little bit more detail. There's been 94 earthquakes. That's a lot. That is a lot of earthquake activity for a simple 5.3 earthquake, uh, which you normally would not see that many aftershocks. And uh, today, it looks as though they've been increasing quite a bit. I'll show you the seismograph thumbnail here in a little bit. But taking a look at all these earthquakes right here, 4.3, these are you know, just under the 5.3 earthquake level that they originally had here a couple days ago. There's a 4.5 aftershock, which I believe is the largest in all of all of these earthquake aftershocks that have happened. Another 4.2 right there. And you go down here to the 5.3, which started this all off. Actually, a 4.3 is what caused it. Uh, then we had that 5.3 afterwards. To me, that's just kind of like a weak spot in the crust where it's uh, eventually going to start to go away we're going to start stop seeing earthquakes in this region eventually uh, but for now it's kind of like a just an area where pressure has been built up for so long that something's got to happen you know it just starts to crack and crumble and that's what's going on uh, the only bad thing about that is once this is pretty much backed up to where it cannot relieve any more pressure then uh, basically the pressure builds up again in this area and well other sections over here close to Yellowstone it's never a good idea to have any type of you know interruptions in the crust and earthquakes around the big super volcano that's what scares me the most but pretty sure Yellowstone is safe their earthquake swarm up there is a hundred and something miles away and I looked at the seismographs earlier and it looks as though the uh, Yellowstone earthquake swarm is dying down a little bit. But still, 94 earthquakes is quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of activity there, all within this certain region right here, guys. Let's get rid of this map here and I'll show you. I'm just going to zoom in a tad bit closer and show you guys the exact location east of the Soda Springs region. You can see it's spreading out a little bit. Uh, to me, it kind of looks as though it's headed in the southward direction along that ridge, the Caribou Ridge, but uh, nothing of too of too much concern with this swarm, guys. It's like I say, it's kind of interesting to see this type of activity, especially since they haven't had that there for well, I, I don't know if it's been like that at all. You know, so it's probably got some residents frightened within the area that something's going on. You know, maybe Yellowstone's going to blow, but that's not the case. Like I said before, Yellowstone's safe for now. Um, I'm going to pull up the seismograph thumbnail station over here and show you guys real quick um, what it looks like on the Yellowstone thumbnails here. It actually looks like they're having a whole bunch of earthquakes in Yellowstone, doesn't it? Well, that is not the case. All the activity that you're seeing on the seismograph stations here are from the earthquakes occurring in so, uh, southeastern Idaho region near Soda Springs. This station here being the closest, I tried pulling up a different station closest, uh, closer to the Idaho region, but I just couldn't find it there. I couldn't get it to activate. But quite a bit of activity. And the all the activity today within the past few hours is all within this region right here within this time frame at 1900 all the way to 0400 UTC time a lot of activity I've been getting notifications left and right on my phone from the USGS and just a lot of earthquakes happening but like I said unless we start seeing an increase in magnitude an increase you know of earthquakes close to or above the 5.3 that they had then I wouldn't start worrying you know like I said there's always a chance guys excuse me there's always a chance that there could be something bigger happening 
a larger earthquake and I was reading on this article right here from the news station I'll, I'll send the link here for you guys so you can read this up a little bit it's happening right, right now the quakes continue to roll in after uh, we'll go ahead and stop that but that's that's their article in regards to this earthquake swarm um, of course a lot of news stations there will bring up stories like this to not fear monger but to bring in views and to bring in you know the the viewers to their news stations it might be a sl slow news night whatever but there is it's definitely something to watch as always there is a potential for a larger earthquake and in this article uh, they state down here that the potential percentage 63 percent of a 6.0 earthquake coming in in the next half century along this area says here sometime sometime within the next 50 years USGS says the so-called big one will start rattling southeast Idaho along the Bear Lake Fault like I said it's 6.0 63% within the next half century pretty interesting article like I said I will leave leave this article link in the description box below uh, last largest earthquake or the last earthquake stronger than 5.0 was reported in 1994. And now they're coming from a 3.1 um, in Idaho as we speak. So yeah, the, the earthquake activity continues, guys. And it, like I say, it's something to watch over time. And uh, it's something that I have pulled up here on the seismograph stations here. Uh, it's gonna be the station called, let me bring it up here real quick and show you guys. Cedar Butte, Idaho. So when this thing bounces back around, I have it set on uh, rotation here. Uh, when the six point, or when the, uh, Cedar Butte, Idaho station comes up. That's the one to watch. You're always going to see uh, some earthquake activity occurring there. And that's the station right now appearing on the screen. Cedar Butte, Idaho. So definitely watch this one for the activity in the Idaho region there. If it's a strong enough earthquake, it will show up in the Yellowstone seismograph stations as well, which I do have the Madison called BW2007 Yellowstone, Wyoming. That's really the closest station to the earthquake swarm in Yellowstone. So if it does show up on that one as well, then it's going to be a you know pretty good sized quake there. So yeah, I will leave all those links, guys, in the article section below, or in the description below, I should say, and hopefully um, we won't see anything larger than what's going on right now. Like I say, it's kind of scary seeing all these earthquakes occur just over a 5.3 but it's it's a, it's a weak spot in the crust right now it's a just kind of like a an area where it's seen a lot of pressure and it's you know it's cracking it's causing earthquakes but uh, I don't think it's nothing we have to worry about right now so stay tuned for the channel for more information as it becomes available and we'll keep you guys updated and as always, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. And comment below if you have any questions you know that I may not have covered in this video. I know there's a lot of information and stuff like that, but uh, I'll try and help you out the best I can. So for now, um, we're going to end this video and uh, we'll talk at you guys here on the live stream. Make sure you stop on by on the live stream and say hi.